Hello everyone and welcome to this quick tip from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to show you how to use an add-on that's now included in Blender 2.68 or available from the add-ons repository which I've linked to in the description of this video if you're using a previous version but it's the edit link library add-on. This is a really really useful tool that allows us to very quickly edit any linked assets that we have in our scene. So for example if we're working on a scene like this all of these assets are actually linked in via groups. So in the original file, I've added the object to a group. And then in this file, I've literally just gone into the file and link and then brought it in. So in this scene right here, the actual scene that I'm working on, I've only linked in the files, allowing me to just collect the, the references to the objects very, very easily without actually working with the actual data. And this is very, very valuable because it allows me to kind of work on a scene without having to worry about the individual assets. So if I ever want to go in and modify any one of these assets, like say the silo, the barn, the tree, the tractor, or anything else, then I can just bounce back to that original file, edit it, edit it in its own individual space, and then come back to my scene file, and it's all been collected together. But here I have a pretty simple scene. What if I were working on a scene that had thousands of objects? Suddenly, opening up a specific file each time you want to edit an asset can become quite cumbersome. And this is where this edit link library add-on comes into play. This was developed by uh, Jason Van Gumster within, I believe, help from Basam Kardali and Pablo Vasquez. You can find it, just search for edit linked library. And here we are. Like I said, it's now included in Blender 2.68, which right now I'm using a release candidate. As of the time of this recording, 2.68 is one or two days out from release, I believe. But again, if you're using a previous version or are not on the development build, then you can simply download it from the add-ons repository. But just enabling this, we'll then put our new toolbar here in the, or excuse me, new panel inside the toolbar, such that if we select any one of our linked objects, and this is just linked objects. If I just select a regular object, you'll notice that it says ground is not linked. Then it allows us to simply edit that library. So normally if I wanted to go in and say, edit the silo, I would go up to file and open, and then I would navigate to the silo file. I would open it and then I would edit it as I wish, save it, and then reopen this scene file. But instead I can simply select it, click edit linked library. It bounces me into the silo file. I can edit it, say maybe I will just make this simple. I'll just select the top here. I'll bring it down and make it a short silo. And then I can simply click return to original file. Since autosave is checked, I don't need to worry about going to file and save or anything like that. I can simply click return to original file and there we go. It loads it back in and we're good to go. So I can do this on any one of them very easily. Just click edit link library and then I can you know, make my changes. I can go back. I can go back into the silo. Maybe I decided I really don't like that. It's really short like that. So I will just say do this. And yeah, that looks about right. So I can click return to original file. And there we have it. it makes it very, very easy to go in and make these kinds of changes very quickly without having to worry about trying to navigate through a large collection of files. Again, this is a very, very simple scene, but imagine if you're working on something with thousands of assets. And this is actually how this add-on came about. I was actually working on a scene that had literally thousands of assets within the, the scene, everything from buildings to vehicles to trees to roads, you name it. And I had just this huge list of assets to try and navigate through, but I was constantly going in and editing each one of those as I developed the scene. So as I discovered that I wanted more detail here or more detail there, I would bounce over to those files, edit it, and then go forward. So I worked with, with Jason primarily to develop this add-on to allow you to very quickly bounce back and forth. Now, since then, they've taken it a lot further, Jason and, and friends, and have brought it to where it is today. And it's a really, really useful add-on. It's a huge time saver, even though I know that it seems like it's fairly simple. You know, it's just a matter of going up to file, open, select the file. But again, when you have huge numbers of assets, it's a huge time saver and very, very quick. And the fact that, you know, it automatically has auto save and things like that makes it very, very handy. Now you can also go ahead and have it open up in a new Blender instance if you wish. Generally, I don't like doing this, but you can if you want to. So then you could keep one instance of Blender open with the actual file, saving it, and then bouncing back over here, or do whatever you wish. 
Also having the path here is very handy because you can see if it's a relative path or anything like that. You can kind of see where the asset's at so you know maybe if that asset has been moved or if it's no longer in a relative position or anything like that. So that's the edit length library add-on. Very, very handy, can be a huge workflow speed up and definitely worth using if you're working on any kind of scene where you're bringing in a lot of different kinds of assets.